The Mets are hot again. That's six straight wins after David Peterson and Francisco Lindor absolutely dominated in Tuesday night's win over the Red Sox. So let's talk all things amazing with our very own Dan Martin. Dan, what's going on, my man? No grimace, no OMG, but that's still six straight for these guys in the second half of the season. They've come alive again. So what have you seen from this squad during their most recent hot streak? Well, that's a good point, Brandon. They, they haven't had to rely on any any gimmicks this time around. It's just, just good baseball. You know, they've gotten really good starting pitching. They've gotten some timely hitting. And Francisco Lindor has played like an MVP candidate. So it's really, you know, just the team coming together. They've been a lot of ups and downs this year from, you know, the terrible start that the team had. Uh, really now that they've been consistently good for about two months, and they've been really good for the last week, and, uh, you know, they might just be coming together at the right time because, as we've seen the past couple of years, if you're playing good in September and you get into October, anything can happen. And, and right now they've just got a very good vibe to them uh, and they're playing good baseball. They give themselves hot at the right time. And another guy that's that's absolutely on fire right now, you mentioned uh, Francisco Lindor. He even He's hearing some MVP chants out there, Dan. Uh, he's been absolutely amazing over the last couple of months. He struggled at the beginning of the season, and people kind of wanted to write him off. So talk about how great he's been recently. And do you think he has a chance to beat out Shohei Otani for NL MVP? Well, that, that – First month of the season, just like the Mets, uh, you know, Lindor was was beyond just bad. He was really bad, and and I think some people were were concerned that not that he wasn't going to have a good year, but you know, it, is he going to live up to this contract? You know, it's a, a ten-year, three hundred and forty million dollar contract that he's still in the early stages of. Uh, but uh, David Stearns preached patience, and obviously they they had no choice but to be patient, and he's. Uh, you know, making them look very smart. You know, he's he's living up to the contract right now uh, on both sides of the ball. And to your question about Otani, you know, I, it, it seems hard to believe that anyone is really going to give Otani a uh, a run for his money at MVP in the National League just because he's doing some historical things between the you know potential 50-50 with the home runs and the stolen bases and the Dodgers in first place. But just the fact that Lindor has gotten himself into the conversation is really something. And, and he's really inspired the whole team. He's, he's the leader in the clubhouse. He's the leader on the field. Uh, you can just see the way he talks to the pitchers on the mound, uh, talks to the guys in the clubhouse every day. So, uh, you know, he's, whether he wins the MV, MVP or not, uh, you know, he is the guy in Queens. And everybody is kind of just riding his back. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's gotten to the, to the verge uh, of a playoff spot. No Kodai Sanga, but president of baseball operations, uh, David Stearns, has praised the depth of the pitching rotation. David Peterson, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, Luis Severino are leading them from the front, and they've really stepped up their game. So do you think this pitching rotation can pitch this squad to a playoff spot? It looks like they can. I mean, it's not just Peterson and Severino. You know, Sean Manaya has pitched really well the past couple of months. He was another guy that the, the Mets took a flyer on who was coming off uh, not, not his best year. Uh, but obviously Severino has, has really, you know, come to the forefront of this rotation. He's brought some kind of moxie and confidence that – that I think the team is also feeding off of. And, you know, he, he's been he'd been bad and hurt for a few years, but he still has that pedigree of being a Cy Young uh, a candidate with the Yankees, knows how to win uh, this time of year. So I think that's important to have in the clubhouse as well. Uh, there have been questions about this rotation all year. Like you mentioned, Kodai Senga's made one start. He was supposed to make 30 starts and be the ace of the team. Uh, so they've gotten contributions from a lot of guys. But, you know, Peterson last night, He's uh, on a seven-game streak that's really impressive with a 1.81 ERA. You know, I don't think anyone thought he was going to be able to keep up this pace, uh, and he has. So why shouldn't he be able to give them four more good starts heading into the playoffs? So they've got a lot of work to do ahead of them. They have a, you know, a couple big series against the Phillies coming up. That's not going to be easy. Uh, they have a, a tougher schedule ahead than the, than the Braves do, the team that they're trying to catch. So there are still some challenges out there for them. But look, the way they played, but, you know, not just this past month, the past two, two and a half months, you know, there's no reason to think that they won't be there for that last week of the season and then anything can happen. With the rotation coming along the way they are, do you bring Kodai Senga back? You know, I, I, that's a good question. I, I was talking to some people about that. You know, they, they 
the Mets, uh, David Stearns and and manager Carlos Mendoza, both said, you know, we'll take any Kodai Senga we can get. Hmm. Um, but I'm wondering, you know, what what role does he have? Uh, you know, he's a guy that they were going to be very careful with even before this injury prone season when he missed time with a, a shoulder strain and then um, you know other other injuries. Um, so do you bring him back and just have him pitch a couple of innings here and there because he's not going to be built up as a starter? Uh, so they'd have to figure out what kind of role that he would have, and, and he's not someone that has, has pitched in a lot of different roles. Uh, they said, and he said, he's willing to do whatever it takes. So maybe they start him for a couple of innings and then go to the bullpen. Uh, that's tough to do in the playoffs, and then you might be putting the whole uh, pitching staff in kind of a weird spot. But as Stearns and Mendoza said, any type of Senga contribution they can get, if he's healthy and pitching uh, like he can, they'll take. So it's going to be, that's going to be a very interesting decision uh, if he is healthy and able to pitch on September 25th, uh, that final week of the regular season. What do they do? As, as Stearns and Mendoza said, you know, they want to be in that position uh, to have to make that call what to do, uh, you know, to get them into the playoffs and, and when they get to the playoffs, what to do with Senga. They've got some work to do before then, but just the fact that it's a, a conversation is a good sign for the Mets. And that is what we call a hashtag great problem to have. Do you bring him back or not? Because your rotation has been absolutely bawling as of late. Uh, Dan Martin, thanks for jumping on with us. You bet, Brandon.